about today may be a fairly simple day in lockdown, I thought I would show you how I dress. While what I wear is mostly Victorian based, I usually have a few other time periods mixed in as well. I am Drusilla Riviere and this is how I get dressed. Hello. These, this is my pantaloons and my blouse. And I quite like them because when you wear this kind of thing underneath a pair of clothing, it kind of you've got strength underneath. It kind of feels like you're strong in a way. So whenever I wear skirts, I always like to wear these underneath and they're just kind of they're fun to wear. I made them myself from an existing pattern, so they're all kind of right, we've got the going down the front and everything else. But they're just really comfortable, really fun to wear. I didn't make this blouse, but it's it's just a generally nice one. It has a very low arm size, which means that when you do this, it all kind of bucks down and looks like um, something from the Edwardian era that's not quite being worn correctly. But um, apart from that, I do love this little combination. No, I really quite like this. It's an undertone garment. I, I put, I basically treat this as a pair of combinations, and I put things over here. It's more like a shift, in fact like an 18th century shift in that I do it is visible throughout the day but that's probably way too much history for one little video my next layer is this shirt top I made it myself showing has been using an elastic bobbin as you can see if I go inside out you may be able to see the elastic that I've sewn along which means that it's extremely stretchy However, you do have to do a lot of it to do something like this. I quite like this because not only does it feel like you're being hugged, but it also it kind of puts you, makes you stand up straight like you would want from a corset. So it's and it's just kind of yeah, it's a really nice thing to wear. It's just a really nice feeling to kind of be stand, holding yourself holding yourself well, but also feeling as though you're being hugged. on to the next layer, the petticoat. Now, I always hang my petticoats inside out. And there's a reason for this. Ballerinas also do this with their tutus. Because if you want, if, you, if my hands are a skirt, if you want your skirt to be as far out like this as possible, then if you store them like this, the weight of them is just kind of gradually bring them down and down. So when you store a skirt like this, just normally, it's still kind of going to be doing this, and then when you come in it's going to be like, yeah. But if you, if you store it from the furthest possible extreme, it gets used to that, and then when you wear it properly, it kind of, it wants to stay in that furthest possible extreme place and you get it to go out as far as possible. Now if you think about it, the furthest possible place is this place where you've got the edge at the bottom of the, uh, the waistband of the skirt here and the hem of the skirt up here. But seeing as it's kind of hard to keep a skirt upside down, you can just flip that around the other way. It's basically inside out. It's just interesting. So it took me, I think, two days to assemble this petticoat, but about one week to finish up all the edges and put cording in it, because I think there's around about nine rows of cording in this. It's, it's amazing. But it's very, very, very poofy. Initially, when I had made it, um, I had... I made this second ruffle that you may notice before. I made this second ruffle a little bit lower, but I didn't quite like that. It was kind of sticking out at the rough angle, and a lot of the skirts that I was wearing with it were actually the length of this ruffle, so you just had this other messy one coming in underneath. So what I decided was I put pin tucks in it, which, makes, which is something you often see in petticoats to kind of strengthen it. 
put pin tucks in it and then I threaded cording through those pin tucks which is not something you usually do but it has worked marvelously not only bringing the level up so the two are equal but also giving it a little bit of extra strength so practically everywhere there where they could be cording there is cording in this dress you may have also noticed oh, you wouldn't have though because it's kind of hard to see that there's a little flap here and the reason for that is this. This is my little bustle support. It is majority of this is hand sewn except for the seam along there. Um, I made it in a couple of hours. It was very, very simple and easy to make. Just a bit of cabbage and a bit of cotton tape. Um, it's quite nice. In fact, it keeps me warm a little bit. But I put that underneath there because, seeing as this is the only petticoat I wear, I didn't want this to kind of be a bit too kind of obvious, so this kind of just softens it a little bit. Then, I also... have this skirt, which is actually inside out because the other way around has these flowers on it, but I didn't quite like those, so I decided just to wear it inside out, and now all I have is this little strap along the bottom, and a tag at the back, but I don't really mind. Now, while this skirt may not have as big as 12 factor as this one does, I think they work quite well together. century pocket. Now this is, my look currently is kind of like a 50s Victorian kind of thing. It, it's a little bit 1850s and 60s if you ask me. But um, this is 18th century. I made this last year I think. I made this last year. And in 18th century you would have these um, your skirts. Instead of just being like a what we usually have today with like one fastening up the side and be kind of like gathered or pleated or um, panels or whatever. 18th century skirt, fundamentally two rectangles, kind of pleated, so gathered or pleated, and then with a, and like a waistband and two straps along the side, and they were sewn together halfway along the side, if that makes sense. And then basically you were able to access your hands through your petticoats which meant that you could have these actual pockets, they could come in ones or they could come as pairs and this was mine, it's, I thought it would work nice with my outfit today and also good because I don't really have a pocket in this outfit they were not typically worn on the outside but today I thought I would, might want a little bit more of a pop of colour in this outfit so that's why I am wearing it as though do you bet my cat has decided to come back right the next item my arm warmers now I didn't actually like these when I initially made them and you can kind of see why they fan out because when I sewed the hem at the top after the, oh by the way these are a pair of socks in case you're wondering um, when I sewed the hem at the top they just kind of stretched out because I had to stretch it and then um, what I did for the sock part I kind of French seamed that we can look about that a bit later but I did some interesting things to that and then that kind of meant that it bubbled out in a weird way and then when I put the little finger things in that didn't quite work nicely either so I didn't quite like them until one day when it was rather cold and I was wearing this blouse and I went you know what I need some arm warmers I'm going to go and find those and I did and I've been wearing them since because they are just so beautiful that there's no point just thinking that they're badly made when they're beautiful. nice and they 
match my pocket. Then I have my cap. I absolutely love this. The vast majority of this is hand sewn because well these all these seams along here are sewn, sewing this on initially, sewing this to be done initially, and this seam on initially for a machine, everything else is hand sewn, like oh, all in here is hand sewn and all along there is hand sewn and all the it's so beautiful. It's got some little pleats at the back. This was actually made look small pleats in the back but actually made from a skirt I just felt like oh, I've got to have a grey felt caplet and then I looked down and there was an old kind of big really well, not big but really tight kind of grey grey skirt from this fabric and I was like I don't like that skirt it's got weird purple buttons but I'm gonna use it I asked if I could and I could and then I put a little bit of this um, kind of black wool lining black wool fabric because I thought that if I would use like a synthetic kind of poly cotton or a bamboo silk it just wouldn't work because this is such great texture and this had to kind of have texture as well and then I got hand sewing this now I've got a beautiful warm little caplet I have this rather cute little bag I think like a pocket knife or a little pair of scissors would work nicely in here. My mother gave it to me just recently. Okay, probably should have put it on before my caplet. <laughs> it's alright though. I'll put it on this way. It's very, very cute. I think it's Irish linen, so it has all these beautiful little patterns. It's rather lovely. I don't actually keep anything in it, but it's just nice to wear. Then I put my cape on. <sighs> then, because I need to be going out and you can't really just walk out in socks, I'm going to put some shoes on. Now, mine isn't actually that well made. I didn't quite know what I was doing. Now, many, many things I do differently. It kind of doesn't quite sit very nicely, but it's the only one I have of current. So, this is the one I will wear. you didn't bring your mask. I mean, I do have a mask. I've got two, but they're blue and... Uh, I suppose I'll just have to take some aesthetics pics around my house then. 